spins right, comes back left, Natty shoots, oh my goodness, Luis Natty! Here goes Daryl DK, at one horn, DK shoots, and scores! DK wins it for an end round! What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the Lions Blog YouTube channel. Got a, it's weird saying YouTube channel instead of podcast. Welcome back to the podcast as well. If you are listening to the audio version, uh, here again to do another scouting video. These are going to be picking up more. Uh, we got a lot of players to scout, um, and we are starting off our second one with Dogor Dan, Dogor Don. Not sure if I said that right. Thorhalsen. Um, Icelandic midfielder seems to be able to play in multiple different areas of the pitch. Um, very young, only 21 years old. So really excited to look into him here to do it with me. As you can see on the screen next to me, being very patient. Adam, how are you doing tonight? I are doing good. We had some technical difficulties getting started, but, um, I'm really excited to dive into this. Started on, uh, as I said, last episode is probably my favorite edition of the off season. Yeah, um, real exciting to see what we've got here. We'll pull that up in just a second. First, we just got to chat a little bit, though. Um, we obviously weren't able to watch it, but Orlando City did just post that they won 2-0 against Ooh. Minnesota. Who's the second the... goal scorer? Dogger Don. Dogger Don, there we go. <laughs> Dogger Don with a dagger at the death it was the post. On oh, we the love Orlando it. City. Alliteration there. Um, so, again, yes. one, I believe Air Trend Car scored 18 seconds in. Was it that quick? I didn't hear that. It was, it was wow. in the first minute. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, we just like launched the ball up yeah. and Kara just like headed it on. And it was yeah, a goal. Apparently, like... Petrasso put a ball. Uh, um, uh, oh, I saw like Austin Davids tweet about it. Apparently, mm -hmm. Petrasso put a ball into the box on the left side. Kara got onto it and put it in in literally the first minute. Awesome. And sure, Adrian blew. Heath wasn't too happy about that. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, Beautiful. sad times. Yeah. Um, happy times, sad times, all the fun stuff. So, yes. So, Dogger Don already on the score sheet this preseason, um, coming off the bench to get a goal. So, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, I will be honest. I have not really seen anything on him. I've seen a couple clips, uh, but not too much. So I'm going into this fresh. Um, I, I know he's got a bit of technique, and he can hit a free kick, and that looks like a flair type of player. So yeah, he's um, got what you what you can see on um, what I've watched of him at least um, is that is the stuff that doesn't rely on the level of competition because uh, it's the Icelandic league, you know, not, not to throw shade, but we just don't know the level of competition. But the thing that you can see clearly is he's an impressive striker of the ball is, is what I've, I've called him. He's very versatile. Um, these highlights, I think I've actually watched this video. Um, it's going to include both attacking and defensive highlights, shots, dribbling, passing. He's a very complete or at least versatile player. And, and we, we discussed last time we were looking at his, his track record. He's got a lot of minutes. He's not a raw player despite his age. Yeah, I think it was, what, like 8,000 minutes or something, yeah, something like crazy, crazy like, like that? that. Yeah. yeah, so I wonder if just, like, he has such a high technical ability that they that his teams feel like they can just put him anywhere, and he's mm -hmm. going to be, you know, probably one of the better players in that position on the pitch just from that league. Again, no disrespect, but... I, technique is not a very Icelandic trait, you know, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, I guess there's the Jofi Sigurdsson, but yeah. Ooh. <laughs> That's not... I mean, just the bend on that. <laughs> the bend, but I mean, yeah. yeah. Not a good advertisement for the league there. That's good movement. Yeah. 
Because yeah, he kind of like he's, noticed the space and ran into it. Yeah, he he looks to be an intelligent <laughs> player in terms of kind of being available where the the play is to be made. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, that's a nice finish right there. He is mm-hmm. wide open, but it's a nice finish near post. Not an easy strike to complete. No, curl, curling it around mm-hmm. a player and the goalkeeper. Nice. Very good. I mean, that that's just hot right there. Yeah. I believe he finishes the play, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I right. mean. That's Sunday League stuff right there. He's quite clearly the best player on the pitch in like all of these. Yeah. Oh. Nice. Yeah, that, that late to... arriving run. That's yeah, I was about to say select. the same thing. He seems to find to find himself at, at like the D in mm-hmm. a lot of these goals that he's scored. Obviously taking set pieces. I wonder if he's gonna end up being because um our set piece taker when Mauricio's not on the pitch. Like, Mauricio gets subbed off right to, in the 70th and we need to close that game. Mm-hmm. I wonder if he's going to take set pieces, especially because you'd like, like, our other options are like Faku, Martino, Heda. You would like them in the box to finish it off. I agree. I'm sure he could do it, right? Yeah. Like, seems like he takes set pieces. It's weird how, like, a couple of our recent signings are all set piece takers. Like we've seen Petrasso take set pieces. Mm-hmm. We've seen Santos, um, and then Ojeda, obviously in the last one. And now here he is taking free kicks and um, corners for his team as well. Uh, must be some sort of requirement that um, we get some tech- technical players in there in the team, which oh, which sure. is needed, much needed. Mm-hmm. Oof. See what we got here. Oh, that's the little piece of flair. <laughs> Another theme we've seen, it's players that seem to be able to find space no matter where they are on the pitch. Mm-hmm. So this is the stuff I like to see, and this is why I like to watch games. Because here he is, he's crowded mm. around, two, three people around him, keeps it there, keeps it there. He looks really comfortable. It's- very just press on resistant. the ball, yeah. Like he'll bring the ball down. Oh, this is yeah. That's this is nice. Nice. That's good. That that's yeah. that's the right intention, right play. Maybe overhit it a little bit, but the intent is correct, um, mm-hmm. and that's what you want to see, especially at this age and this type of league. Um, are is is he doing the right things? And yeah, he is. Okay, remember when I told you about the the long switches that he could do? Oh, are we gonna like start that. seeing all of those? Uh, well, that was one of them. Mm-hmm. But I, I've seen him. I think in this video, he hits multiple of that kind of pass. Look at the space! Oh my gosh! Must have been like a clearance after a yeah counter attack or something. Here he is on the left. We've seen him in the center. I mean, he he is he can roam. It'll be interesting to see if we. Yeah, like oh, I that. see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, that's a dangerous pass right there. That this ball. Okay, this is incredible. Watch that one again. Rewind that. That is the best pass in this video. Look at that. Look stride. at the ridiculous curve on that ball. In stride. Yep, on his foot. That's Ooh, impressive. That is- I mean that any team in the world can use that. Real Madrid, Barcelona can use that. Like that—that that is a top-level skill right there. Mm-hmm. I'm struggling to see where where he fits. I, I kind of see him as like a Pereira backup and emergency winger backup as well. Is that kind of uh, what you're thinking? I'm thinking he plays eight. Because he, I, I, I think he's the junior Urso role. If we yeah, wanted so to play the same for, formation as last uh, season, he mm-hmm. plays the junior Urso role. In, in the four three three, he's he's very versatile. He can play anywhere from uh, uh, anywhere up and down the wings, 
Uh, he can play center attacking mid. He can play center mid. Uh, not really a six, but you know he's not lost in defense. Right. I think I think box to box midfielder with like a like a flair for attacking is probably the best spot for him. Oh shoot! Hold on. Let's get we through the Adams. advertisements. All right, let's bring it back up. Oh, I pressed cancel because I don't know what I'm doing. You should just play the ads and get extra money. Yeah, easy. That's how that works for me. No, not at all. See You're not getting here. paid. I'm not getting paid. And I'm not <laughs> paying you, so I don't know who's paying you. <laughs> uh, I, 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 you don't know about our Patreon? <laughs> no. I said that like two years ago. <laughs> Uh, another long ball. Nice. Yep. Press resistance. Yep. yep. Now, especially in teams in the East, like like Philly, like Red Bulls, like you need you need press resistant midfielders. Yep. In, in order and, to compete. Oh, nice. This is just like a level above from like Perea. If you think about it mm -hmm. like when we first got prey we were like oh he could turn into a really press resistant midfielder but he really just turned into a keep possession ticking over mm -hmm. midfielder and he never really developed into someone like this uh at least yeah. not yet we'll see what happens over in philadelphia but um yeah this seems like a much more useful perea i think that's who he replaces in the squad in my opinion i know you think it's urso i think it's perea in terms of hierarchy, but um, it's like I don't, I don't see Doug or Don starting every game like Urso. Did. Maybe not starting immediately, but I also don't think we're going to use three midfielders every game. Right. I think he sees a ton of minutes, though. Yeah. I think he easily has a 2,000, 1,800 minute season. I hope so. I can see why I you like him. He's there. He's they're going to be those minutes in for in for him and i think when he gets in he's going to start impressing right away if if any if he can translate any of what you see on this to mls it's a, he he's a a wonderful player to watch and the thing i'm excited about is it he's not like he's almost like the extra man right mm. we've got Pereira. We've got Faku, we've got Ojeda, we've got Gonzalez, Angulo, Kara. We've got all that, and then he's just like another maybe underrated option from like scouting, from like uh, other teams scouting us. They're thinking mm. of how can they lock down Ojeda, how can they lock down Faku? It's like, okay, well then here comes Dagor Don off the bench, yeah. and he's gonna he's gonna bring some some technique and. And some forward thinking and some mobility as well that you have to that you have to think about. And I mean, he could just be key. kind of an X factor a little bit. How many times last season we we liked the starting lineup and we played well for the first sixty and then we faded towards the end because we had to make some subs because Pereira got tired because Pato got tired, you know, and then we it just or you know Ertan Car had to come off for whatever whatever reason, right? And then it just faded because the substitutions weren't up to snuff in terms of replacing the creativity, the attacking acumen, the technique, all that. Too many times. Way too many times Way did that happen. Times. A player like Dagradan, who you can take multiple guys off for him. You can take a winger off for him and go more heavy in the midfielder midfield. You can go like for like at two midfield spots with him. It's it's a really, really useful player to have for just straight up winning games. And also like He's going to do the same types of things that you're seeing him do in this video here when he starts an Open Cup match against a USL team, and he's going to murder them. Yes, it's, it, he, he will definitely um, do good against that level of opposition, in my opinion. I wanted to call this out real quick, because look at his burst here. He has no but right to that ball. He doesn't. The, the guy's got yeah. him beat. Just that that's acceleration right there. So maybe the ball bounces towards him a little bit. He gets lucky on the spinny bounce, but that's some acceleration and he's keyed in really good. 
I'm interested to see what his his cons are, right? Like he's, he's going to have some some pros and he's obviously got some pros, but he's going to have some cons too. I don't know if it's defensively. I mean, this is obviously a highly <laughs> package. They're yeah. going to show a ton of that. My theory would be a, you know, just like everyone else, there's not as much space in MLS as there is in a lot of other leagues. Adapting to that can be difficult for any new coming player. Um, and the physicality too, though I don't, I feel like the Icelandic League seems, just from the, what we've seen, it seems, like, fairly physical. Um, I don't know if he'll... And he seems pretty good about being press-resistant, so I don't know if he'll struggle with that too much. Um, but then also, I wonder if it's the speed. Like, I wonder if, like, the, the, maybe the, the higher speed, speed will get I would him. also say maybe not being able to go forward as much, A, because of the constraints within the system, and B, because of the attacking talent on the other side having yep. to keep your shape a little more because he he has complete freedom it looks like to do whatever he wants to do mm -hmm. and he will not have that and this is something else i wanted to kind of mm -hmm. highlight about a, not a potential con based on what we're seeing but more a question and something to look out for are we going to see him take on opponents like in this clip right here or are we going to see him make a simple pass because he's in a new environment he's in a league a tougher league I want to see him take people on and take shots. Oh yeah, because you do that when you're feeling confident. So if and, he's, and if if he's taking someone player, on like that, yeah, he's feeling if confident. You, if you can get a player doing that from midfield, that's you know that's gravy. We expect Falco to do that. We expect Ohe to do that. We expect our Chuck Hart to shoot pretty much every time he gets the ball. If we if we get players, you know, beating defenders one on one from midfield, it's it's going to be a, a tough long season for the rest of the league yep just again just like that cutting and taking a mm -hmm. shot so at the end that's the end of it so yeah. my worry is definitely the speed comparison between the two leagues but he seems not, pretty fast yeah he seems like he's got some acceleration but he's probably he's he, he's not used to the um like his opponent's speed. His opponents will get to him that much quicker. His opponents yeah, will be able true. to keep up with him instead of him bursting past him, mm -hmm. per bursting past his opponents. So I'm worried about that. And um, I'm hoping he comes in and is confident. And honestly, a goal on your debut, even if it's in preseason, mm -hmm. that helps big time. So oh, yeah. that's going to help him get settled into the squad right away. So mm -hmm. that's positive. So what do you think? I mean, you know I like him. It's um, it's the exact type of signing I think we need to be making, especially like the 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 reporter fee and his transfer mark. So like, take it with a massive mountain of salt. But the reporter fee is like two hundred k. I don't know where you're getting a better player for even a million, right? Let alone two hundred k. I I just don't. That that is crazy little money for the the sheer quality of just skill you see on that tape uh, for a squad option for a squad it's incredible business it, it really is um obviously it's a discount because of the league he came from but just i trust rico and co in the scouting department that they have you know watched way more of him than we have and you know kind of um verified those skills that we saw on the highlight package and say okay this guy's the real deal we can pluck him out of here and you know put a spotlight on him where he can showcase what he can do to the rest of the world yeah what's most exciting to me is he's almost like a swiss army knife he can it, it looks like he can do different roles different asks different systems and he'll be able to fit right in and do it to a competent level and I think he's going to be a really important player for us this season. Maybe not important in terms of he's going to be starting every game. He's going to be scoring goals and getting assists for us every game. But more important in squad rotation, coming off the bench, allow for our better players um, to get you know, 10, 15 minutes of rest at the end of games. He can come out and help close a game. He can come out and help push to win for a game. That's that kind of Swiss Army knife feeling. If you're pushing to win a game, you don't put Kyle Smith on. 
right? But if you, you're pushing to close out a game, you put Kyle Smith on. Now, Dog or Don looks like he can do either of those mm-hmm. roles in, in the same capacity. And that just means we have another option that we can trust off the bench. So Yeah, it's it it's a, a an option that you can put on and he will not take the quality of your squad down at all. Yeah. So real excited to see him live in person. I think this is an underrated signing. Can't, kind of came out of the blue. And um I'm glad I got to to watch and learn mm-hmm. a little bit more about him. So That's awesome. exciting. Yeah. Well, Adam, where can our listeners and viewers find you at? And viewers, it's so exciting. You see our pretty faces. Gavin's growing, growing his hair out. His hair used to be like as short as yeah. mine. Yeah, and uh, so this is, you didn't get to witness the progress. But <laughs> um, no, you can find me out on uh, my handle on Twitter at Kosher Taco Truck. Um, also, the Cappy's Food Truck at Cappy's Food Truck on Twitter. Uh, and Instagram is where we post where we'll be. And make sure you come to Broken Strings Brewery on February 25th. Be a very special menu. Um, I just texted my baker today about a certain color of bread, if that's a possibility again. So uh, we'll see. Haven't got a, a text back. Color of bread. But, okay. Um, I will be making that announcement as soon as I get the okay there. Awesome. Great to hear. You can find me at Lions Blog One. You can find us here on YouTube at Lions Blog. Make sure to subscribe and like. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you haven't yet, go head over and watch the Martin Ojeda scouting video Adam and I uh, did two days ago at this point. Um, and with that, thanks for watching. Adam, thanks for joining me. And vamos, Orlando. Vamos. Biggest man in MLS comes up here!